Well, good morning, good morning. Good morning, Franny, how are you? Good, good, good. Looks like we've got a great day in store we for do. us. We do, we have a beautiful day. Oh my gosh, yeah, looking forward to it. So maybe a little uh, up in the mountains checking out the leaves, huh? Yeah, we that can do that. Like that sounds like we fun, that sounds like fun. leaves all over. All right, well, let me get my stuff and we'll get going. Sure thing, sounds good. to be a little on the louder side. So this is a 1985? It is, it's an 85. Uh, this is a downdraft version. So uh, most, most of the four valve motors were actually fuel injected to meet the US Environmental Protection Agency standards. Uh, this was not one of them. Uh, as I mentioned, it's got uh, six downdraft Webers and a few differences between the downdraft versus the fuel injected versions, uh, mainly in terms of reliability and power. Uh, oddly enough, the fuel injected versions were down pretty considerably in power. Uh, they were officially rated at 425 horsepower versus 455 horsepower for the downdraft versions. But the downdraft versions were closer to 470 to 490 as far as horsepower. Wow. Uh, they've also got a different, different power band, uh, lots more torque early on, and uh, also did not have a tendency to overheat like the fuel injected versions did. Oh wow, I didn't know that. I didn't know they had overheating issues, that's something. Yeah, uh, they had to do some things differently as far as the cooling system and uh, even though the fuel injected versions had dual fans per radiator, they weren't as efficient as the single fan setup oh, okay. that the uh, carbureted versions had and nothing's power assisted from the brakes to the clutch to the steering. Uh, so yeah, we definitely want to uh, get to the open road. Yeah, absolutely. And that's kind of common of, of sports cars and this being a supercar of the age that you know, even the 3.2 Carrera has manual steering and manual brakes, so does the 308. So it's kind of common of the older classic sports cars and it gives a, a real feel that you just can't get. It just gets kind of watered down through power steering, power this, ABS brakes and all of that. So yeah, this is the real, this is the real deal. This is a real driving experience. This is really it. 
Yeah, it's definitely visceral. It's it's uh, you know from from the moment you start it, you know, you've got to uh, let everything come up to temperature as far as the fluids and and what have you. Uh, of course, if you don't, she'll protest pretty adamantly for several kilometers. The uh, blind spots are uh, are pretty big on the car. You could probably hide the state of Rhode Island in the blind spots here. And as a result, you're really having to pay so close attention to everything that's going on around you. Um, because much like, say, Lady Gaga at a church social, she does kind of get a lot of attention. Yep. And so a lot of times people will crowd you in in the blind spots. And so, uh, of course, they don't know it, but uh, it, it makes driving that much more challenging. And again, it's, you know, it's, it's not, it's not about practicality. It's, it's about the experience and the experience is, is really hard to, to beat, in my opinion. Yeah. You know, there aren't any, there aren't any modern conveniences. Uh, you know, sure, there's some air conditioning here, but air conditioning is a bit of an afterthought. With all the hardware in the cockpit here with you, the AC, even though it works, is simply not designed to cool this kind of air under these circumstances. Well, we do have these incredibly uh, small windows on the side as well, though. So they, the, because of the shape of the door on this car, the window is only half frame anyways, and then only rolls down halfway. So that's it as far as, you know, window ventilation, I guess, on the car. Huh? Right, right. Yeah. So, and, and a lot of that actually has to do with the Autostrada. The Italian highways, uh, many of them were and continue to be toll roads. And so you had to have a way to throw your change out. Ah. And that gives you enough room to essentially stick your arm out and toss some coins into the basket. You know, but other than that, you know, it was just also pretty much an afterthought. Oh, wow, that's interesting. That's interesting. Yeah, and along those same lines, you know, of course, uh, Lamborghini, with the exception of the Mira, which came before this, uh, has had scissors doors on all of its 12-cylinder motors. So that's an easy way to uh, distinguish 12-cylinder motors from, from the other motors, is, is the way that the doors open. Oh, that's interesting. that a lot of people are curious to know, you know, if one should show up on the market or if they're out looking for them, you know, what things to look for. And, you know, it's, a lot of it is just the same types of things that, that, uh, that you look for as far as any used vehicle. Uh, you know, you make sure that if there's anything wrong there's there's uh, there's an explanation behind it 
uh, quite often you'll you'll come across situations where the, the current owner will say oh yeah it's an easy fix that's rarely the case <laughs> and so uh, so if it's an easy fix you probably might want to either steer clear of it or, or have it fixed beforehand uh, you know, certainly one of the things about older cars be it uh, be it this or anything else uh, are the availability in terms of parts um, you know I know just uh, from my own experience uh, because of the limited production of these uh, downdraft models um, whenever I happen to come across parts whether I need them or not I buy them mm. you know, and, oh, yeah, that's and, a good point and yep. so uh, you know a lot of times you know it's it's a bit more uh, than than uh, you know say the average part for a, a regular family car but uh, you know without those things you're not going to go anywhere. Right, right. So, How about general maintenance on the car? What do you think about that? You know, so so general maintenance on these. Again, you got to put everything back into the proper perspective. So this, the concept came out in '74. Uh, you know, the car itself is an '85. So you know that uh, we're looking at the car itself being over 35 years old. Mm -hmm. uh, you know, and, yeah. and a lot of the a lot of the uh, conveniences simply aren't there so if you if you uh, buy this thinking it's not going to cost you anything you know it might be something worth not looking into because you know these these are not inexpensive to maintain and uh, there's a lot of labor that goes into it and uh, if you do it that's great if you you know source it out that's wonderful too a lot of these simple fixes even routine things uh, are very time-consuming you know, uh, just from the standpoint of a there was no owner's manual built for something like this uh, Lamborghini decided well you know, we're only going to make a, a handful of them so why bother to make an owner's manual yeah. there are lots of good people out there in terms of very knowledgeable people that you uh, align yourself with and and uh, you ask a lot of questions. Uh, if you're unsure about anything, um, you know, I'm one who will ask questions uh, as opposed to going in and doing exploratory surgery. Um, you can find out very quickly that doing exploratory surgery is or can be a very uh, expensive proposition. You just have to, to go into, uh, into it with that mindset that you know, there are going to be maintenance issues are going to be upkeep issues and uh, there's going to be availability issues you know, in some instances you might have to have parts made you know, I've had parts made as well and even your tires huh so you have to get a special run for those rear tires uh, yeah so the the tires they're uh, 345 45 15s uh, once upon a time there were two manufacturers of that uh, that was both Pirelli and Yokohama. Uh, Yokohama dropped out of the race a long time ago. Now it's only Pirelli, and Pirelli has a manufacturing run once every few years, and they don't notify you of them. You simply have to stumble across them, or, or somebody tells you about them, or whatever the case might be. Um, you know, so it's little things like that that uh, make the joy of ownership that much more interesting. Weber Borelli units, which were uh, notoriously 
bad in terms of just letting go on you. And so, so yeah, I did did upgrade that. Uh, actually, had one uh, built by uh, by an American manufacturer, MSD, and uh, I couldn't be happier. It's it's been it's been bulletproof, and um, I, I'm not worried about you know, losing spark. Uh, for no apparent reason, and so uh, yeah, it's a great, it's a great investment. Well, and I'm also noticing no bumps, no rattles, no jiggy this and jiggy that. I don't hear anything. It no, just feels it's it's, tight it's, a, as a, it's drum. a tight, it's a tight chassis all the yeah. way around. And you have a fairly straight, short exhaust on this, yes? Yeah, they uh, yep. they're essentially straight headers. And we were talking a little bit before, and you were saying that this car has all of its paperwork. So yeah, so that's another thing to to look look for, uh, Franny. Thanks for the reminder. Um, yeah, if you're in the market for something like these, uh, you know, make sure or at least ask about the DOT and the EPA releases, the, uh, the Department of Transportation and the uh, Environmental Protection Agency releases, uh, because without those, it can, it can limit which states mm -hmm. uh, in the U.S. You know, are, are, are uh, able to register uh, the, the vehicle. So. Ciao.